In this lesson, we'll learn how to do the calculations for correlations and simple linear regression using Excel. This lesson again is brought to you by Uncle Frank. Imagine that the fantastic uh, faculty at a very high prestige nursing uh, university, School of Nursing, had developed a scale which they thought would help predict how well students would do, first year nursing school students would do in their first year of school. And they call that score the hardiness score. And they're using it to predict how well students will do. Now, they might ask themselves, is there a linear relationship between the hardiness score and the GPA of the nursing students after the nursing students' first year of school? So imagine that we're going to use our regression techniques and our statistical ability to answer this question. Here's the data. Uh, the first student had a hardiness score of 0.68 and a first year GPA of 2.61. The second student had a hardiness score of 0.79 and a first year GPA of 3.49. So the first thing we would do is we would take data and we would it into our spreadsheet. And you'd notice a couple things funny. Even though you might type in just 0.68, Excel's going to add the leading zero. It's going to add 0 0.68. So there's no need for you to type the 0 0.68. It's a waste of a key typing. So you can just put 0.68 and it'll put the leading zero in front of it. Another thing you might notice, like in A12, is when you type in 0 0.70. It leaves off the following zero. It just, even though you've typed in 0 0.70, once you hit enter, it'll change it just to 0 0.7. Now, that won't change your answer, so don't let that bother you. But don't keep trying to retype it, thinking there must be something wrong. No, that's just the way Excel works. We could change that if we wanted, but it's not worth doing right now, so we won't. So now we're going to uh, try and work this problem. And instead of going up to tools and going to data analysis as we normally do, we can do this one straight with uh, statistical functions. So we'll do that. Here are the functions that I want to use or the answers I want to derive. I want to derive what R equals. R, remember, is your Pearson product moment correlation coefficient. It's easier to to calculate than it is to even say. And the next thing we want to do is the slope of our regression line. So we'll have our best fitting line that goes through our dots. I hope you've been playing the correlation game that's on the web where you're uh, trying to guess what the slope is of a line or trying to draw the best line through the dots. But anyway, our, that'll be our slope of our regression line. We'll also calculate the intercept the regression line. Skipping down to the bottom of that column, well, once we've got the slope and the intercept, we can get our specific equation. The general equation for a line is y equals a plus bx. But to get a specific equation, we need to know what a is and what b is. And we'll find out what those are. Then we'll find out what our co uh, coefficient of determination is. That's just r squared. And then we'll say, we'll build a little formula box where we can put in any value for hardiness score. And this will tell us what our regression line would tell us would be the predicted grade point average for that hardiness score. So I know that sounds hard, but it's not that hard. We'll start with the first one. All we do to find out what the Pearson product moment correlation coefficient is, is we type an equal sign then C-O-R-R-E-L, which is short for correlation. Then left parenthesis. Then we put in our data range for our Y values. Now, it's not so important with an R, but later when we do the slope intercept, it's very important that we do the Y values first. So we'll do it here, too. The Y value is the thing that you're trying to predict. We're trying to predict the grade point average. So we want to put in that column. So we'll put in B2, not B1, because when we're using functions, we can't include the label. So we have to just say where the data are. So we put in B2, a colon, a 
colon's a dot over a dot. I know you nurses think of a colon in, in an entirely different way, but uh, for Excel, a colon is just a dot over a dot. And then we'll go down to B16, which is the last place our date are. Then we put in a comma because we've ended our Y range, and now we put in our X range, which is A square or A2 colon A16. Then we close our parenthesis, and when we hit enter, our correlation is 0.5943. So that's pretty good. That wasn't that hard. Slope is even easier because we do it exactly the same way we did our R, except we replace the coral with the word slope. So our magic word is slope. So we just type in equal sign, slope, parenthesis B2, colon, B16, comma, A2, colon, A16, and end our parenthesis. Then when we hit enter, we'll find our slope is 4.0748. That's a pretty steep slope, and it's positive. So that means that as hardiness scores get uh, are higher in value, GPAs are higher in value according to this regression line. In fact, for every one unit change in hardiness, there's a four unit change in GPA. So that's pretty big. The next thing we'll calculate is our intercept. There, the magic word is intercept. So we type an equal sign, the word intercept. We put our data range, which is parenthesis B2 colon B16, comma A2 colon A16, and end our parenthesis and press enter. And we get 0 0.0512, no, 13, 0.0513 when I round it off to four decimal places. You know, now that we have the slope and the intercept, we can skip down to our equation for the line and put what the equation is for our specific line. Again, the general equation for a line is y equals a plus bx. But we can replace what a is and b is because a is the intercept and b is the slope. So we'll do that. We end up with y equals our a is 0 0.0513 plus bx, but our b is our slope of 4.0748, and then we have to follow that with an x. So this is the equation for our regression line. Now let's go up and find out what our coefficient of determination is. Now remember what that is. That's the what percent of the variance in GPA can be explained by the variance in hardiness. That's uh, the coefficient of determination. But all we do to calculate it is we take our R value and square it. So to do that, we type in an equal sign. And then we could type in E3, or we could just click on E3. But then we have to type in a caret. A caret is shift uh, 6, shift 6. Uh, it's the 6 that's above your letter keys, not the 6 that's uh, on the number keypad. So you have to go Shift-6, and that'll give you that caret. And then that's saying raise to the power of, and since we're squaring it, that means to the power of 2, so we follow it by 2. So we type an equal sign, click on E3, press Shift-6, then we press 2, and then we press Enter, and we get 0 0.3532. And you might be saying, wait a minute, why did it get smaller? Normally, when you square things, they get bigger. Like if you square 2, you get 4. Square 3, you get 9. You get numbers. Well, if the number you're squaring is less than 1, you'll actually get a smaller number. 1 half squared is 1 half of 1 half, which is 1 quarter. So it's a smaller number. So whenever the number you're squaring is less than 1, you actually get a smaller number when you square it rather than a bigger number.